everybody. My name is Nicole, and I work at the Municipality of North Perth in the Parks and Recreation Department. One of the other things that I do with the functionalities of my job and passion is I teach first aid and CPR as a Canadian Red Cross um, instructor. One of the biggest things that I get from parents or caregivers or even grandparents is what do I do if an infant chokes? It's one of the scariest experiences to have, but we need to make sure we know what to do. So a couple of things is we do offer first aid and CPR programs through the municipality of North Perth. We also offer um, infant and toddler workshops throughout the year as well. Unfortunately, due to these times, we're not able to offer those programs. So I wanted to hop on here to hopefully ease a little bit of fear and stressors during this time, especially if you're starting to introduce solids to your infant. So first things first, I want you to know that gagging is completely normal for an infant, especially when we're introducing new solid foods to them. Baby needs to learn how to get rid of an object in their airway and or in their throat if it's not going down properly. What's going to happen is the tongue is going to push the food forward and allowing for that infant to start to chew. So that's a good thing. We want them to learn how to do that. Another thing that we need to have a little bit of comfort with is it's okay for them to partially choke. This is going to allow for them to eventually learn how to get rid of an object completely on their own. So one thing is if our infant has consumed something and they are starting to cough, encourage them. We don't want to stick our finger in their mouth to remove it. We don't want to push it down further. So the thing that we can do is we can hold on to their cheeks like this. So what that's going to do is going to help prop open that jaw. And it's going to allow for them to cough something up. We want to lean them forward and we want to just simply rub their back. Okay, you guys know that that's a burping type of a method. They know that from a very young age. It's how you help them get gas out from breastfeeding and or formula feeding. So we want to continue to encourage them. So we can cough with them. We can tell them to cough it up. So there's so many different ways that we can do that for them, but we don't want to stick our finger in their mouth. Okay. Now, if a baby starts to go to the point where they can no longer cough, they're not crying, they're not breathing, they're not making any normal sounds that they would make, we need to intervene quickly. So there are two things that we're going to do. We are going to do back blows and we're going to do chest compressions. So the first things first is we're going to grab their cheeks again, just like that, and we are going to lean them forward. We want to make sure that their head is lower than their butt. We are going to deliver five firm back blows with an open hand with the heel of our hand, okay? One, two, three, four, five. If we didn't feel anything come out, we are then going to turn them over. No matter what position that we do, whether it is chest or back, we always want to make sure our arm is on our legs so we have stability. So when we turn them over, we're going to hold on to that baby's head, and we're going to flip them just like this, okay? Find that nipple line. Then we are going to go two fingers just on that sternum, just below the nipple line. Okay, we're going to push down five times, just like we did back blows, but we have to push down one third of the depth of their chest. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. If that didn't work, we take a quick look, nothing happened. We're going to turn them back over and we're going to continue. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to repeat doing that until the object comes out or until 911 arrives. When it comes to complete choking, we want to make sure that we get 911 there as fast as possible. We don't want to make sure, we don't want to wait too long um, to see if we can get it out on our own. If there is any damage to that little infant's airway or to their throat, we want to make sure we get it checked. We also want to make sure that we call one right away in case our baby were to go unconscious because we can't get the object out. It is better to have our EMS there sooner rather than later. So when we do back blows, okay, the vibration of that back blow is either going to force the object out or it's going to move it in that airway to allow for the next step, our chest, to push the air out of their lungs to force the object out. So just simply repeat that. Okay. 
that's all that we're going to do. So my email is in the comment section. And you are more than welcome to send me an email if you have any questions at all. Um, I am not at the office, but I do have my computer here. We're all practicing our social distancing, so feel free to send me an email if you have any questions at all. Thank you.